This is Life Rewired, the Brain Injury Podcast, for survivors, by survivors. And now your host, Rob and Ashley. Because a tra- it's a trauma reaction, we're experiencing a situation that reminded yeah. us of a trauma. Well, and then we get the overlapping part of where brain injury is the most important. Brain injury is one of the largest and biggest, most impactful, influential traumas we will ever have in our life. And do we even approach it that way? Like it needs to be healed. Truth. Right? Like we need to address the trauma side of it. And that's why I do life coaching on brain injury and trauma healing because they overlap right and then you know steve's over here talking about right he's talking about the struggle of balancing a life take the brain injury away for a second think Mm. about this in everybody's lives we all have traumas up until my brain injury I had a decent life, but I had a lot of things happen to me and they weren't all great, but a lot of things I had forgotten about. But if you, and I want to challenge you, whether you are brain injured or not, I want to Mm -hmm. challenge you to get out a piece of paper and just think, just keep thinking, start from your childhood and just kind of weave your way up through your life and anything that, even if you don't think it's a trauma, it can be. Cause I started writing some things down and I could not believe the number of traumas before I even got to my brain injury Yeah, that I had weathered throughout of my life. So now like you were talking about, and especially men are not good about dealing with their emotions. You put them in a bottle and you stick them on that shelf and then you get to the point of the brain injury. Now you're dealing with all the trauma from the brain injury, but guess what? All those little things on the bookshelf behind you, they're, like you said, they're attached to you and you're reacting and don't even realize you're reacting to those things. Yep. So, yeah, like you said, you're, you're always in that storm. You know, here's when I noticed it. Here's when I noticed that my traumas were showing up, you know, in ways that they never showed up is that um, I used to teach social emotional learning. Um, My son, uh, I think he was about 16 at the time is when I first recognized my traumas were showing up. That doesn't mean that I immediately was like, oh, I got to go do all this trauma work because I still had brain injury (laughs) and I didn't know what was happening to me. And it showed up way more times than it probably that I'm when I'm comfortable with when one time is more than I'm comfortable with. But all these times that it showed up that um, I was never aware of that it had been showing up since brain injury, right. And and so you know, I don't Mm -hmm. catch it the first time it shows up. That's I mean, I have a brain injury. (laughs) like, And so um, I got all the other things I got that I, I still haven't been able to identify or process. And so you know, here I was, my son didn't want to do his homework and he was getting in trouble in school. And so he was manipulating me Mm. and my normal thought process would have been age appropriate expectations. And I would have showed up with a response of age appropriate expectations. I'm not going to get angry. I'm not going to take it personally. I'm not going to bite into whatever it is he's trying, or I'm not going to take the, the, the bait to whatever it is he's throwing out that I'm going to try to try to chase. I also call them red. I call them flares. People will throw up little flares. If, if like you've, you've, if I'm in a, in an argument and, and I've made a solid point against their argument and they don't want to accept that. So they like derail it into a different argument by throwing up a flare. Um, my mother used to argue that way. Uh, so <laughs> He, um, he would, uh, he would throw out these flares and I wouldn't follow them. Right. And I would just keep it, keep it on, on path. And 
that, hey, we're going to keep this short and simple and, and we're not going to argue. I'm not going to debate with you. This is how it is. And this is the rule, right? Here's your boundary and here's your consequence. No, that's not how I was showing up. You know, I was showing up this far from his face, screaming at him with veins popping out of my neck, veins popping out of my forehead, spit going on his face. You know, I'm disassociated behind myself, screaming at myself to stop, but I don't have any control. Yeah. I can't stop it because because that's how TBI rage works, you know, because I'm disassociating because I can't mm -hmm. accept that this is me. And that comes back to the denial, right? Right. I couldn't accept that that was me. It took me a long time through TBI counseling to be able to do that. And, and it took a lot of compassion to be able to accept that that was me, you know, that I was causing harm and pain and trauma for my son and for myself. But why was I showing up that way? I had feelings of the past. That is a big question I ask anytime I find myself feeling intense emotions like that to somebody else or to a situation. I ask myself if I'm being triggered, but I had to do so much work to regain being present. I knew how to be present before brain injury yeah. and I couldn't be present. And that was one of the biggest comparisons that was hard for me to let go and accept is that I had all of these skills beforehand and I'm doing everything I can. I know the knowledge never went away. The wisdom didn't go away. So I'm trying to do the things that I knew I needed to yeah. do and they weren't working. I wasn't capable of doing it. And so that's when I recognized it was my mother. I was responding as if it was my mother manipulating and abusing me. That was the feelings of the past. Mm -hmm. And that was the trauma right. that I needed to address. You see it? You know, it, you just, wow. you don't recognize yes. that it happens. And that'll, that'll make us want to have ideations. That'll make us feel like we're a burden. Oh yeah. That'll, that'll, that, you know, and then, you know, I, I do want to speak to this part of it because he he does bring up a very valid point on the challenges that it takes for us to maintain any resemblance of living in this society at all, whether it's yeah. maintaining in I mean, he says full-time employment. I kudos, kudos yes. to you. I don't know how you're doing that. You know, I, I couldn't, it's hard. And I mean, I work. Yeah. Yep. And in the full-time employment family and obligation and all of that, like that was one of the things that you know, when I, when I first had brain injury and things started to fall apart with me and my ex-wife, I put a watch on my family. I wasn't going to make a permanent decision about my family um, until I was back in my right mind. And that took five years, which was a very hard, long five years. Wow. Not just for me, but for those in my life that had to hear me talk about it while I had a watch on it because they're like, just do something. But I don't expect them to understand the complexities of a brain injury and why I couldn't just make that decision. I was trying to, to rebuild mm -hmm. myself and heal myself and recover for myself so that I could be there for those in my life. Like I, I understood that I was different. Yeah. I understood that they had someone different in their home. And I didn't blame them for any feelings that they may have had, but I wanted to do my best to try to now let's catch what I'm talking about here. Have the life I used to have. That comparison of the old me. Yeah. And so, yeah. And so like, uh, I, as I watched my family, 
you know, I really, really had a hard time managing my full time job. I had 10 employees underneath me um, and, you know, managing my wife and managing my son. I was the head of the household. I was, you know, I was the provide. I, I mean, we we pro we both provided, but there was a point in time where I was more of the sole provider while she was going through school and stuff. And, um, you know, I handled all of the day to day of the family. Right. So like I could no longer manage myself, let alone my family. And so like when I asked for a divorce, that was one of the things I, I had to tell her is I said, you know, like it was a hard thing for me to accept. Like I can't be the dad and the husband that you guys want because the one the husband and the dad that they want was the old me he ain't here yeah so we're not the only ones grieving the death of the old us right everyone in our life right right and that's one of the reasons why we lose so many people is they can't, mm -hmm. they can't accept that. It's and hard. it has really, it's, yeah, yeah. It's not personal. They're, they, they don't yeah. know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. And then there's those that don't even, I didn't want to say they don't accept it. There's those that don't even acknowledge it. Oh, well, yeah, yep. yeah, you got a brain injury. So what, you know, so do you want to go do blah, 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 blah? No, <laughs> it's not that I don't want to. I can't. There's a difference. Well, and then it, and then it's like just the fact that they asked you, told you how much they don't understand you. Like, yes. like if you understood my brain injury, you wouldn't ask me to go to the football game. You nailed that. Right. You nailed it. My dad, um, he says he understands, but he doesn't because of the things he'll he'll come off with. Uh, things like, uh, oh, yeah, oh, my head hurts too. Well, mine's hurt from the day I hit my head. It's never stopped. It only gets worse. Some days it drops back down some, but it gets worse again. Yeah. You know, you could take an Advil and you're – feeling fine in a few hours. I don't get that luxury, you know? Right. Or, and there are times that he actually gets to see it manifest. For example, we will out to eat sometimes with him. And I try to brave, brave it sometimes in order for myself. But when there's a lot of people in the restaurant and I'm already at my cognitive limit for the day anyway, and I've went over, and I try and the words just stumble out like a, an old drunk. And then the stuttering starts really worse. That's when he really sees it. But then he forgets again. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> the compassion's there with him, but most people they don't even see that. No, they, they can't. You know, they, they can't. And, you know, <laughs> it just made me think about... Um, you know, this is why it's so helpful. And I, I encourage brain injury survivors to connect with other brain injury survivors, you know, do understand, don't just do the trauma bond. Okay. Please don't just do the trauma bond. That's not healthy. Okay. If, if all we're doing is, 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 is complaining and being negative, like let's, let's support each other. Let's listen to each other. Let's talk about the things that we got going on etc. But that's why it's so important that we have the friends or the support groups, you know, whether it's online or it's in person, mm -hmm. that you're connecting with other people like yourself, you know, and, and I'm going to share, Rob, how we set up this this podcast, which um, <laughs> surprisingly, I showed up for. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Uh, Y'all, I slept in this morning. I apologize. Hey, you know, I've been working a lot. I do have a brain injury, so I appreciate the grace. But um, uh, with that being said, anytime, is, anytime. damn it, I lost my thought. <laughs> oh, uh, 
the you the, might have a brain uh, injury. We talking, <laughs> yeah, right. We we were talking. We were trying to schedule this, and and I've gotten very busy. I've picked up a new job um, at a salt float place, which I honestly think um, I'm going to do a video on salt floats. I'm getting a lot of people asking me about what are salt floats, and let me tell you, they are tremendous for brain injury, and I'm going to do a video on that. So um, I I've been doing them for a long time. I'm a member turned employee. But I'm, I'm working like I'm grateful. I, I'm working 25 hours a week and and I, I w- I've been able to, you know, I recognize my my abilities and my limitations. And this is a place. This is a therapeutic place for me. So they understand why I'm there when they offered me the job. And so awesome. I'm working every other day. That gives me oh, the nice. ability to rest the next day if I need to. It's also slow enough Smart. that we only, yeah, thank you. Thank you. But I had to learn those limitations, right? I had to be honest with myself. I had to accept and not fight mm-hmm. with resistance my reality so that I could advocate for what I need, which improves my quality of life. And he asked, when does this madness end? Well, just keep doing the work. Keep working, keep doing things that you've never done before. Re- keep rebuilding those neural pathways. Keep resting and taking care of yourself. Keep um, advocating for, for, for more therapies and those kind of things and looking into ways that you can heal yourself. Do brain games, you know, those kind of things. But to yeah. bring this back full circle, to bring this back full circle is – Rob and I were trying to figure out how to schedule this because I started a new job and I've picked up my life coaching, consulting on TBI and trauma healing, and I'm gaining clients, which is really, I celebrate this. I finally got out of my own way and it's so beautiful to see people receiving what I have to give for them and how impactful it is being. But Rob was like, well, I got, you know, it's, it's, it's my wife's birthday and we're going to go do this on Saturday and, you know, maybe we could do it later. And, you know, he threw out a time for him, like eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night after he was going to go socialize. Right. And so here he is, like, (laughs) not thinking that he's going to go put himself through cognitive depletion, brain battery depletion. Mm -hmm. He's going to go. Man's going to go people. He's going to go socialize. He's going to go be around loud voices. He's going to be around overlapping stimulations. He's going to have to process a ton of information. I did not mean to flip everyone off. And, <laughs> um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, but he, he comes back, um, you know, how are we going to have a good podcast if his brain's depleted? How are we going to be able to talk about the things that we really need to want to talk about? And, 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 and it, And also, let's just have some like compassion and understanding and thoughtfulness towards Rob, you know, because I understand as a brain injury survivor. So I was like, hey, Rob, what are you doing, dude? (laughs) What are you doing, man? Like, uh, you're not going to be well. I I don't suggest that. Let's reschedule maybe for the morning, you know. And and so uh, just to point out how... Having somebody who understands can really help and support you in the appropriate ways. Um, to put it to, a, I, I guess I'll say it like this, to pull the car in the driveway. Last night, I uh, spoke to a friend of mine who's a brain injury survivor. And I said, I told her my little take, I said, you know, and she goes, Hey, if you have a moment, can we talk? Sure. So we FaceTime each other. And we talked almost midnight. But you know what we didn't do? We didn't complain the whole time. We did a little bit, but the rest of the time, it was building each other up. Yeah. And she sent me a note this morning Rob, I want to thank you for talking to me last night. That was awesome. Yeah, that's what we all need to do. Community. Yep. Yep. And there are those moments. There are those moments when we need to vent it out. And please, people, I do encourage you to reach out 
vent it out, communicate as you need to, right? Um, yeah. But I want to remind you of something, something that I wasn't aware of during brain injury because we're not necessarily aware and we're not necessarily present and we're still reacting to all the different symptoms that we have because we haven't right. identified them all, right? Um, mm -hmm. Is I had my best friend and my dad were my two main go-tos. And in the early part, I would just call and start dumping because I was upset. So what, and then, you know, especially because it was my dad and my dad has, um, you know, it's my dad. So, you know, we, we can, we can trauma respond to or trauma react to each other. And if I'm in a bad spot and he's not in a good spot to hear me and he comes back at me, I raged. Mm. Which now I called my dad because I'm having a hard time, but now I'm really just taking it out on him. Just to give some perspective of how I was beating him up unintentionally, not to make us survivors feel bad. Don't feel bad. We're doing the best we can. But just to point out right. that sometimes we're doing things that we don't know we're necessarily doing when we think we're doing something else. And so what I encourage you to do is mm -hmm. when you make that phone call, when you reach out to that person, let's try to be intentional about asking, hey, I need to speak right now. Yeah. You have some space for me? That's and good. that's how my dad and I shifted our conversation. Really good. And yeah, thank you. Well, you have to live it to learn it. <laughs> This is true. <laughs> this is so true. <laughs> well, this has been a great, great conversation. And I cannot thank you enough for doing this. We, we got through the, the glitches, but we'll, we'll fix it in post. <laughs> but, yeah. Thank you so much for doing this today. We are, if you have questions or comments, please, Put it below and Jason and I will be glad to answer anything that, that we haven't been able to address. So until next time, this is Life Wired. Thanks.